Okay, so welcome to the continuation of the Falmouth Board of Selectmen meetings, April 30th, 2012. And as Pat Flynn always says, if anyone other than FCTV is recording this meeting, would you please announce yourselves to all present? Okay, anybody else recording the meeting other than FCTV? No other recordings? Okay. Well, thank you. I must say it's um, a pleasure. Welcome to Falmouth, all of those, those of you who haven't been here before. It's a beautiful spring day. It's nice <coughs> to see a lot of our residents exercising their uh, First Amendment rights, and we've got a meeting to start. So, gentlemen, if you would please rise. Are you recording for whom? Channel 5. You need to tell us okay. Thank you. Sorry. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. So, a minute early. If uh, we have, we're going to begin today with a report by the Falmouth Dog Park. I believe, Barbara, you've got a um, presentation for us. identify yourself for those watching at I home. I will do so. I'm, I am Barbara Schneider. I am speaking today representing the entire Falmouth Dog Park, Park, Dog Park Board of Trustees and I'd like them to stand so you can see their faces and I'd also like to applaud these volunteers for their many hours of service. So would you stand please? Thank you. I have their names uh, up here tonight. I'm, I'm sorry that it looks like some of them weren't able to find parking places or to get here. Since opening day, May 1st, 2011, we have accomplished so much. We have held three training sessions that prepared a total of 26 stewards who volunteer anywhere from one to four times a month to make sure the dog park is clean and safe for canines and humans alike. And if there are any of the volunteers uh, here in the audience today, thank you for what you do. We couldn't do this without you. We have held two doggy bowls involving nearly 100 people and raising approximately $5,500. We have held a Name the Mascot contest in cooperation with many of our Falmouth Elementary School teachers and their classes who nominated a number of names. And voting for this contest is townwide and ends this <coughs> Friday, May 4th at 4 p.m. The winning name and the classroom that nominated that name will be announced at our first birthday celebration next Sunday, May 6th at 1 p.m. at the park. Thank you very much. Thanks. Oh. Decals. Ooh, magnets. We have had two spa days, both for humans and dogs, thanks to four local businesses, which have raised over $1,000. We have had a costume party at Halloween and a pool party in the dog days of August. We worked with two local artists who designed a mosaic wall, taught community members how to craft parts of the mosaic, and installed a wonderful piece of artwork as part of a memorial bench called Cleo's Corner. We have worked with PAL to help children become more comfortable with dogs, how to approach unknown dogs, and to learn what dogs can do when trained as companion animals. We have teamed up with local vets to get dogs kennel cough vaccinations, 
learn about canine flu and the vaccinations for it, and to teach dog owners some basic emergency medicine techniques that can save a trip to the vet. And in early June, we will be offering another workshop on the effects of the sun's rays on dogs and how to protect canines from them, thanks to a grant from the Cape Cod Foundation through the Thomas C. McGowan Fund for Animals. That grant also helped us to buy a bench to place in the shade, which will be dedicated this Sunday as well. <coughs> we partnered with Friends of Falmouth Dogs to hold a How to Enjoy Your Experiences at the Park session. We were the benefactors, benefactors of the proceeds from Cape Canine Cardio's 2011 Canine 5K, which helped us add our newest bench, and the Hollis and Ermine Lovell Charitable Foundation Grant, which provided an educational kiosk with the craftsmanship of RA builders. We also received grants from the Commission for Disabilities that paid for paved handicap parking for disabled humans and dogs, and a walkway that helps those with physical challenges access the picnic table and view the information in the kiosk. And this picnic table provides wheelchair accessibility. I want to add that all of this work was done by Falmouth builders, pavers, and even line stripers. We partnered with the Barnstable County Sheriff's Department to have those in corrections programs help spread stone, sand, and wood chips. And we are partnering with the DPW's AmeriCorps Cape Cod volunteer, Kelsey Boyd, who's here tonight, to increase awareness to protect our storm drains as part of the stormwater program for the Town of Falmouth Department of Public Works Engineering Division. We will be holding a spokes dog contest for Scoop the Poop, an effort that will take place starting during May during our birthday celebration, and Kelsey would like to give you each one of these posters and hope that you'll find a special place for it to get this word out. So hopefully dogs will show up this Sunday to have pictures taken be part of the competition for the spokes dog. We developed a Facebook page, a website, an almost monthly newsletter, and numerous e-blasts to inform people about our programs, any security or health issues, and even to alert other dog owners about a missing dog. We will kick off our newest program May 6th when members of the Dog Park Board will be available once a month at the dog park to hear concerns, ideas, or just to meet and greet our canine visitors. And we will hold a Dog Park Community Forum Tuesday, May 8th, at 7 o'clock in the Bay Room of the main library so people can bring their ideas and concerns and even entertaining stories. In addition, I would like to, <coughs> in addition to the efforts of the town's DPW staff and crews, I would like to thank the 28 local businesses that donated their time, resources, and in some cases, actual materials to make the physical parts of the park what they are today. I have provided the list to you in, the, in a handout as well. And I want to thank all the volunteers and donors, both individual and businesses, and the board of Together We Can that help make this park a reality and fund its first year of existence. In addition to the funds to build the park, we were able to raise the funds to undertake a costly driveway flooding repair. And here I want to give a big shout out to Arthur Aldridge who really became our hero, along with Peter McConerty, who helped us figure out the size of this issue and cr the correct fix for it. <clears throat> we were also able to fund our fees for establishing our organization as a 501c3, as well as the funds needed for annual costs of insurance, poop mitts, poop garbage bags, trash bags, stone, sand, and so on to refresh the surfaces and cover our print costs and drain maintenance. And in closing, I would like to say that we have consulted with citizen groups the A and the ACO from Barnstable, Yarmouth, Dennis, and even Cheshire, Connecticut, who are asking for our help and advice in creating either better or new parks in their communities.
Thank you very much, Barbara, for that report. Um, I, I'd like to open up questions from the board, but um, I think this is really a fantastic demonstration of how um, the public can, well, the public perhaps could have worked a little more with the private on this side to, um, to create this enterprise. But, um, but we can't thank you enough for all the work that you and the Dog Park Board and all of the uh, volunteers have done to make this a reality. I think that at the end, I want to stress those two lists that I put up there. Mm -hmm. yeah. every, every person who came to work at the park mm -hmm. gave something toward that project. Mm -hmm. They either really reduced prices or even in some cases did the job for nothing. I can't stress enough how important that was to our success in being able to open the park. You see that we have neighboring towns still trying to raise the funds. What we found is that in a community like this where you have wonderful people doing jobs that help build such a park, they are more likely to help you with their doing the work then they can contribute dollars. And by putting that together with the people who did give dollars, we've been up and running for a year and others will be struggling for some time to get off the ground. And we have a lot of people in this room that have played an important part. I, I also have to thank that there have been 365 days of somebody showing up wow. once or twice to every day to make sure that park is sanitary, picked up, well stocked with bags. And when people called me, today I had a call from somebody who wants to do one of these in Medford. And she couldn't believe when I told her we had a steward every day at the park. She said, I don't know that we'd ever get a group of people like that. Well, as you see, Falmouth steps up when they think that they need something done. And luckily they thought this was worth doing and we've had great support. Are there any questions I can answer? Are there any questions for Barbara? Well, I have one no, question. Actually, amazing. one of your last um, one of your last slides mentions Falmouth Dog Parks Incorporated. Yes. It's plural. Do you have plans? Well, we were very careful, board? as you know. We're, we've got a wonderful group uh, that makes up this board, and they're very forward thinking. Mm -hmm. um, Matt McNamara was part of that in the beginning, and we were careful when we named this because. What, once you go in for the 501c3, you don't want to have to do that ever again. <coughs> and in the event that the villages start to realize that there be, there be some reason to have one perhaps in somewhere like Woods Hole, these are the kinds of things we wanted to be careful to provide in our planning and in our structure. And so that's why the name. We never know. Never know. Okay, any other questions from the board? No. Nope. Not at all. This is very informative. Thank you very much, Barbara. Well, as we've scheduled so much time for this, uh, if I may, I'm going to read through the list of the board of directors to put into the record here and to thank you all again formally. I'm not, I recognize the faces, but I can't put names to every face in the crowd there. So um, on the Falmouth Dog Park board, we have uh, Barbara Schneider, who's our president and is, is giving us a fine presentation tonight. Carol Dimkowski. Is the right here. She's with us. Ah, thank you very much for your effort. Ellen Barrell is our clerk. Is your clerk? Frank Alfano, Lisa Canavan, Mort Cohen, Tom Garland, Lillian Hauser, Helen Kennedy is here tonight. Teresa Martins, uh, Pam Rothstein, Michael Simino, <coughs> and Stan Terrell. 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 We're all on the board of directors. And again, to uh, just emphasize to the board here, to remind the board that. There are dozens of companies in town who help with this, and again, many dozen volunteers. It's quite a feat, 365 days a year of, of um, stewardship. I know that when this whole thing started, we were concerned about what would happen because, of course, the town still owns the land, and the dog park is doing, in my opinion, the dog park, you, you folks are doing a fine job. Well, as you know, a, um, a week ago, Dalpe Excavating came in and reset the one drain that existed and put in the second donated drain. Okay. And next next week, before next Friday, Arthur Aldridge will go in <coughs> and pave that first half of the driveway and then regrade the whole back of the driveway. Wow. And so by a week from this Friday, everything will be completed with the driveway correction. 
And at that point, we should have a really functional uh, dog park and piece of land that's recreation use. Yeah. So, uh, and it is well used. I didn't tell you this, but in our first year, we have gone through 20,000 poop bags, and that does not include wow. all the bags that people bring themselves and donate, and we have a sleeve that collects plastic bags so people can recycle their uh, grocery bags. But that's an amazing amount, and that's why it costs us about 4500 to $5,000 a year to keep it insured and poop bags and garbage bags in supply and replenish stone. This weekend, the Falmish, Falmouth Jewish Congregation will be doing their volunteer annual work day at the dog park, and we will be sprucing it all up in time for our one o'clock birthday on Sunday, and we invite everyone in the town to come out. Well, I wish you plenty of sunshine for all those happy tails that will be wagging at your, uh, your well-maintained. And thank you very much for caring for the town property as if it were your own. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. Great. Well, next on the agenda, we have a public hearing that has to be held at 7.30. So shall we, if it pleases the board, I guess we'll move on to the summary of actions to begin with. Um, number one, we have a um, proclamation that was requested by the Woods Hole Inn regarding their historic redevelopment. Number two is to approve the request for special events, the Old Stone Dock Day fundraising event at the Ellen T. Mitchell Bathhouse on June 9th, 2012. Um, number three is to actually, okay, and they were waived their fee, number two, because the association is trying to raise funds for Falmouth Beaches. Um, number three is to approve a request for special events, walk for lock, Walks for Locks for Love Community Connections Club, Falmouth High School on May 20th. Number four. Oh. Number five is to approve, uh, oh, let's go through, let me hold number five, the annual seasonal li li license renewals. We'll go through that in a moment. And then number six is to authorize the resale or decline right of refusal for um, 7 Melissa Ann Road. Hold. Okay. Can we hold number one, two, please? Number one also? Right. Okay, so we're holding one, holding four, five, and six. So if I can have a motion for actions two and three. I'd so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Four to zero, please. Okay, um, number one, please. Uh, Madam okay. Chairman, I held this because I'd like it read into the record if we could. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have the voice. You for don't that have this the evening. voice. Would you care to volunteer somebody to read it into the record here? Brent, you're good at reading things. Proclamations. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. While I find my page here for the rest of the stuff. Whereas, the building now known as the Woods Hole Inn was in, built in its present location in the 1870s to provide lodging for guests, and it has been in near continuous use as such ever since. And whereas Elizabeth Colt and Peter Simons purchased the historic property at 28 Water Street from Robert and Claudette Schneider in 2008, much of the building had been converted from guest lodging into permanent accommodations for the owners and their children. There was considerable deferred maintenance. Before Colt and Simons took ownership, various alternative uses for the property were considered by prospective buyers, several of which would have ended its historic role as an inn, including the possibility of tearing the building down. And whereas, believing that the value of the building, like the value of the larger Falmouth community, rested in large part on its history and legacy, Colt and Simons wanted to preserve and restore the building in its appearance and its purpose. They worked with the town of Falmouth, Keenan and Kenny Architects, and v, v Construction to complete extensive renovations in 2012, increasing the number of guest rooms to 14, and significantly improving the structure with a new roof, insulated windows, siding, exterior stair, fire safety and sprinkler systems, plumbing for seven new baths, and construction of staff housing on the previously unoccupied top floor. And whereas Colt and Simons have maintained the historic character of the building, both on the exterior with a new Queen Anne-style gabled stairway and on the interior by salvaging original building materials, creating wallpaper from 1946-era check-in cards, <laughs> preserving old wooden floors, antique bathtubs and radiators, and many other period details. And whereas Colt and Simons are dedicated to the preservation of Woods Hole and Falmouth as a place to treasure history, and the natural beauty of the region, and to share these blessings with family, friends, and visitors from all parts of the world. 
Now therefore we, Mary Pat Flynn, Melissa C. Freitag, Brent Putnam, David Braga, and Kevin Murphy as selectmen of the town of Falmouth by the authority vested in us, do hereby proclaim our appreciation for Woods Hole in historic redevelopment. Okay. So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Okay, it's four nothing. So um, that was number one, two, three. Number four, approval request for one day liquor license for the Portuguese festival at the Fresh Holy Pond. The Fresh Pond Holy Ghost Society on May 27, 2012. Well, Kevin, you held this one. Yes, because uh, my disclosure, I'm the holder of an all alcoholic seasonal liquor license. Okay, so. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No? Four nothing. Thank you. And then number <coughs> five, I had requested. Oh, where's my list? There's the list requested that we hold. We have some seasonal license renewals for 2012. We have secondhand dealers, Cape Cod Gold and Silver on Vucrest Drive in Falmouth. We have a lodging house at Chapquit Inn on West Falmouth Highway in West Falmouth. We have the bowling alley at Leary Family Amusements. And we have an automatic amusement devices license also at Leary Family Amusements. Um, do I have a motion for those? I make a motion, Madam Chair, to approve. Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. For nothing. And David, you asked to hold the authorizer retail <coughs> decline right of first refusal for 7 Melissa yes. Ann Rose. Madam Chair, the reason I did that was I saw it on the, on the agenda, and then tonight when I had come in, I received this packet mm -hmm. relative to that from Sari Boudreau from zoning, and I was trying yeah. to absorb all these pages before I make my vote. So um, that was the reason I held it. So just if someone could just explain to me better. Because um, this packet references in an email from Sari Woodrow to our office, um, number 16. Mm -hmm. And on the list it says, under the deed restrictions attached to the affordable units, the Falmouth Housing Authority shall be included in any group of agencies to be notified of a sale or a foreclosure relative to this affordable unit. And before I take my vote, I just wanted to make sure I was fully um, aware of what I was voting on now that I have this packet. Okay, well, basically, I, I believe what we're doing is um, we have the um, first right of refusal if yep. the piece of property goes up for sale. And um, I believe it's, who owns it? The Falmouth Housing Associate, Falmouth Housing Corporation owns it. And um, <coughs> it's actually the current <coughs> tenant who is hoping to purchase this property. And this current tenant is indeed income qualified okay. to purchase this. So this house is not leaving its affordability status. Okay. It's just Falmouth is giving up its okay. its option to purchase the house and it's going to stay it's it will remain an affordable uh, member a piece of the Falmouth affordable housing stock and Okay. That was my point. that was my concern. I mean I know there's yeah. been discussions of two other things the one on Locust and the Dillingham Avenue. Yeah. So so I just want so to make not, sure this is separate so Yeah, so we're not losing any of our okay. affordable housing stock and it's actually going to the um, to the woman who's, who's renting it right now. Okay. If, if she manages to get her financing. Thank you very much. Okay. So, would you care to continue holding this? Or? Nope. I will release my hold and I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> second? Second. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Great. So, where do we sign this one? Just on. There's, there's no signature. There's no signature on this? Prepare a letter. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for holding that, David. Okay. So, um, on that note, we still have five minutes before our um, public hearing at 7.30, so... We can't do nine, can we? Because that's not a hearing. Is that going to take too long? Actually, we, Just we could do that. That's a good it's idea sign because the, we're uh, going to have to sign all these Mylar sheets. So why what don't I'll we do, do that? For Heather, is, uh, Heather, I can make you a room right down here if you want to spread them out and sign them now. Do you want to do that? I'll yeah, so if, if nobody objects, then we'll move to, <laughs> thank you, David, yeah. be so long. nobody objects, we'll move to number nine on the agenda, which is to vote to adopt the order of taking for a layout of Austin Stokes Drive, Redlands Road, Regis Road, and Shepherd Place. And if you gentlemen do recall, we voted this last year, and we had town meeting voted last year, and we had gone through all the paperwork and had signed, had signed these before. And unfortunately, it was done on the wrong paper and our signatures washed away. So wait, David, we haven't voted to do this yet. <laughs> we still need to vote to, um, to, to 
do the, the takings. This has, of course, gone through town meeting. Yes. It's been approved by town meeting again. And so do I have a motion on the table? I make the motion. Okay. The second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No? No. Okay. 4-0. If we could just all line up and sign these, we have a special pen that won't that won't wash away. And uh, if we could all just line up and sign these, that would be great. Pardon us while we pause the meeting for a moment here. Very exciting. It's also a document that accompanies it. Okay, we have a document. Yes, I've got it. Do we have several? No, we just have one page here, and well. we've got, what, five mylars? Yep. Here's this one. Wait, do we have two? That's what I was wondering. This shit's probably in duplicate. And duplicate? Well, left, so oh, well. It's going to complicate things. Well, you can burn the other one. Sign them both. Just there we go. Sign, yeah, sign everything that's going to sign here. Oh. Okay. Let's move this ahead, David. Seven or eight. Assuming that these are all accurate, right? Everything's yeah, for years. <laughs> on the agenda if we move to agenda item number four please we have an application for a new wine and malt common victualler license <coughs> for jimmy brown's cafe at 339 east falmouth highway so notice is hereby given under chapter 138 of the general laws as amended that family ventures incorporated doing business as jimmy brown's cafe has applied for a new wine and malt common victualler license to be exercised at 339 east falmouth highway east falmouth mass a hearing will be held in the Selectman's Meeting Room, Falmouth Town Hall, on Monday, April 30th at um, 2012 at 7.30 on the above application. So is there anybody here to uh, represent Jimmy Brown's Cafe, Before perhaps? We get going, Madam Good sir. evening, sir. Would you please? Oh, manager. Yes. Okay. Oops, excuse for me. For disclosure purposes, I'm the holder of an all-alcoholic seasonal liquor license. Okay, thank you very much. Sir, would you mind coming up to the lectern and introducing yourself to the audience and our recording secretary? Please come up to the lectern, introduce yourselves to the audience, and um, please speak at the microphone so viewers at home have the benefit of your, of your testimony. And welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name's Don Long. This is my son, Chris Long. Uh, I'm the uh, only officer currently of Family Ventures Incorporated. Uh, we're starting a new uh, uh, venture, if you will, a new restaurant. We formerly, my family, uh, we ran the Doghouse Restaurant in Dennisport. 
for 10 years. We sold it two years ago. And uh, we decided we wanted to get back into the restaurant business. So uh, we're intending to open our new restaurant uh, called Jimmy Brown's Restaurant. Uh, probably four to five weeks if everything goes according to schedule. At, but we're hoping, right. As part of uh, this, we wanted to uh, have available to customers who might like to have a glass of beer or a glass of wine with their meal, uh, those, uh, those, that wine and beer. Mm -hmm. So we're applying uh, tonight uh, for approval uh, to serve those uh, beverages. Uh, my son Chris, by the way, is going to be the chef there. My son John is also in the audience, and he'll be there. And <clears throat> there'll be a member of our family, as a matter of fact, at the restaurant at all times. So we're here tonight to answer any questions or concerns that anyone might have. Thank you. Chris, do you have anything to add to? Uh, I think you said it all. Okay, <laughs> great. Well, thank you. Um, Any member of the board have uh, any questions? Madam Chair, I do. I'm looking through the packet. Where, what are your hours of operation? Uh, Is that? Go ahead, yeah, we're planning to uh, be open for lunch and dinner, and we're going to open at 11.30, we're planning uh, for lunch, and then close at 9, and we're thinking about closing at 10 on Fridays and Saturdays uh, during the summer. Okay. But we think Is we'll be... You know, 10 will be the latest that we'll ever Did you actually have the application? I don't... We with, have with the all application. The, it's not in my packet, like, in other words, I mean, all the huh. showing the hours and the request for the license and everything? Oh, uh, you know? okay. I've you got the application for retail alcoholic beverage license here, and... There's usually, a, the, like, the one from the office, and it has yeah. it. Yeah. <coughs> oh, that's that one. That uh, says from when to when they wish to be open. Absolutely. Unless it's made on... Because I, I don't see it on the... Uh, we just have to have that in writing and agreed upon, you know. So. Well, I think we could make a motion based upon their requested hours. Okay. Right now. I, okay. Does anyone else? See is um, if I may, while well, you're looking for that, is anyone your employees tip certified? Uh, we're scheduled. We have our uh, serve safe tips uh, <coughs> class for six of us is scheduled for a week from tomorrow. Okay. Okay, we, we tend to request that all employees be TIP certified, or all employees who will be serving alcohol be TIP certified. Okay. So that perhaps might be part of the motion. Um, which hours would you like us, would you like to um, be, a bit, be allowed to serve malt and wine? Um, you said between the, if we're closing at 9 or 10? Well, would you like your your license to go to extend until eleven o'clock? You mentioned you're closing at ten o'clock on Friday and Saturdays, but you know it's for a you're year. Do we you might want to uh, stay open an hour later than that in the summer. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so that could be. We're asking you. Yeah, we're need, asking you. Need, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you. I mean, you said you want to open yeah, at eleven thirty, but yeah, okay, yes, yeah, eleven then, I guess. Until eleven at night. Uh, we don't plan on staying there that later, so. I mean, you know, we're not planning to be open that late right now. Uh, okay. I suppose if that, you know, if things really take off, and, then that's that would why be I'm wise. asking. Yes. Okay. That's yes. why I'm asking. Well, thank you for your Hoping confidence. to open before. Well, I, I think we're allowed to. Uh, well, we're certainly allowed to permit you beyond 10 o'clock at night. So. Okay. That was the question. Um, any other questions from the board? I mean, again, this is just for. Um, Wine and malt. This is not the um, the victuallers permit. This is just for wine and malt right now. Oh, it is the wine and malt common victual yeah. license. Okay, so I have some things to read into the record from the um, Board of Health. Um, we have a letter here from David Carrigan, our health agent, who says the application the applicant has made contact with the health department to discuss. Um, a job renovation project at this location. All state and local requirements relating to the preparation and service of food to the public are understood by the project improvements. All state and local requirements will be satisfied before a food service establishment permit will be issued mm -hmm. to allow this business to secure, um, to serve food to the public. This is handwriting. Mm -hmm. 
And then again from the building department, um, the building department is not opposed to the granting of a wine and malt common victuallers license for Jimmy Brown's Cafe. Uh, the restaurant has applied for a permit which will require inspections by the inspectional services and fire de prevention departments before opening. Okay, but it's zoned properly which allows retail sales including restaurant by right and um, there have been restaurants there in the past. So, um, and then since this is a public hearing, I guess I need to open this hearing to the audience. Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of this license? This permit. Is there anyone in the audience who wishes to oppose the granting of this license? Okay. I'm just curious, where is it going to be? It's um, 339 East Falmouth Highway. That's uh, the last uh, business that was there. is called Diane's. It's the old Davisville it's Grill. Yes. Davisville Grill. Yeah. Yes. In the '60s, oh, really? it was Ski's Diner. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that one. No, I've Johnny. Then. Yeah, and then it was, <laughs> then it was um, Sam, was Sam Seafood. Dave. Yeah. <laughs> what? Before I was born. Uh. No. Okay. So, um, <laughs> what's the pleasure? Of I'll make a motion. But do I have to re repeat the hours? What are they? Yeah, then oh, that's, that's I'm my I'm sorry. Motion. No, I can do it if you'd like. Oh, go I get it all. Um, yeah. Madam Chair, I make a motion that we approve the license uh, for the hours of 11.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. contingent upon receiving all of the other necessary permits. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye, please. Aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay. There you have it, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good luck much. with your new business. Yes. Good, very good. Thank good luck. You. Okay, great. That was easy. So, next we have. May I suggest the minutes, Madam Chair? Okay. We're going to move on to some signed hearings, but we have some minutes. Does anyone mind if we move to the minutes? Nope. Number 10? Nope. Okay. Uh, do you have our minutes, please? I didn't see. Towards the end of the packet? Any amendments to the minutes? Just, um, Madam Chair, on the front page, it's just a spelling thing. Mm -hmm. um, under, we start Scott Gelfie. Yes, I, I you got his new name? I do. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. Any other amendments to the minutes? I make a motion, Madam Chair, to approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. For nothing. Thank you very much, as amended. With a spelling <coughs> correction. Okay. So at 7.45, we have committee interviews. I don't know if our interviewees are here yet. I believe Ms. Cover is here. Would you care, and also, um, Ms. Gabriel is also here. So if we can move on then to our Cable Advisory Committee meeting for interview first, we have Ms. Kathleen Cover has um, volunteered to serve us on the Cable Advisory Committee. So if you wouldn't mind coming to the lectern, please, introducing hi. yourself. Hi. Uh, my name is Kathleen Cover. I okay. live in West Falmouth. Um, and you're hoping to serve us on the Cable Advisory right. Committee. If you wouldn't mind taking a few moments and telling us why, why you'd like to serve okay, and is, why we should appoint you, please. Okay. I don't have any particular qualifications, but I did yeah. for the committee in particular. Mm -hmm. I called Kevin Lynch um, mm -hmm. a couple of months ago to discuss something about, <coughs> I gave the suggestion that I thought that, well, we were talking about the way they program the different packages. Mm -hmm. And I said that I thought that every package should at least include CNN and the Weather Channel, especially the Weather Channel for public safety, you know, forecasting tornadoes or whatever. And I mm -hmm. said there must be a lot of older people, for instance, that would love that, but they can't afford the big, you know, they, want all the, they don't want all the movie channels and discovery, but they would like, and he thought that was a good idea. And then he said, by the way, would you like to be on the <laughs> cable commission? Because we need somebody, and mm -hmm. we need somebody to make a quorum. So I said I'd th think about it, and then I decided I would. So that's really why. I mean, I've never had a huge interest in the Cable Commission, to tell the truth, but I think it might be interesting, and um, I'm willing to do it. And you've served your communities in the past, as I see from I the have. application? Yes. Yeah. Which is uh, fine. Any questions from the board? 
Uh, Madam Chair, I just want to thank you for your application. Okay. I happen to be the liaison this past year to that committee, and I know they go through a lot. In fact, uh, well, because Heather could attest to this, this happened to be the contract, the 10 year contract that right. they were negotiating. Mm -hmm. Liaisons don't give any opinions or anything, but we just sit there and listen. And I learned a lot, and it was uh, a it's lot of it, very interesting. And I have people coming up to me now um, in public because they've been unhappy uh, lately with some rate increases. So I just have them call the cable committee because I can't answer any questions. But there's been some right. mailings have gone out where people are unhappy after the contract went through. There's some different things that are increasing. Yeah, they weren't notified. Yeah, so I, I can't speak for that. As a liaison, we just go to the meetings. But I want to thank you for your application. Okay. And um, I learned a lot. So um, you're going to have a lot of enjoyment in there if you like to get involved in. Uh, Minutia. Very reading, lots of reading. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Anyone else with any questions? No. No. Have you attended any of the meetings? No. Yeah. No, but I do see that Kevin Lynch is here in the audience. Oh, he and, uh, is? I've never actually met him. Oh, so there he talk. is, right there. Good. He's your, your liaison to FCTV. <laughs> well, um, but anyway, we have two um, vacancies on the board. We have a position um, that is that was vacated by Mr. Bowen that's, that expires then June 30th of this year, but you could just reapply and you wouldn't have to stand in front of us again and then could be appointed to three years if it's so certain. Um, if the board so chooses, or we have another vacancy that expires June 30th in 2013. So um, what's the wishes of the board for the one, the two-month vacancy well, and then re-up for three years, or well, to um, do the one-year vacancy? Brent. Madam Chair, I'd make a motion that we uh, appoint Ms. Cover to uh, <coughs> the term expiring June 30, 2013. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye, please. Aye. 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 Opposed, no. So with this, since you're filling an appointment that has not been filled, a term that has not been filled, you may serve this full year and a few months. Mm -hmm. And then you may re-up yourself three times, so for a total of 10 years <laughs> <laughs> serving on the Cable Commission. So okay. uh, welcome to the Cable Commission, and thank, thank you, you very much for volunteering, Ms. Cover. And there's Kevin in the back. I'm sure he can fill you okay. in on um, everything you, so you need to know. Thank Welcome you. to town politics. <laughs> okay. So, with that done, we now have um, Ms. Carolyn Gabriel, who's applied to, um, who's offered her services and expressed interest in serving as a member of the Agricultural Commission. Good evening. So please come to the lectern. And um, if you could just introduce yourself to us and tell us why you'd Care to serve on the um, Agricultural Commission? I'm uh, Caroline Eve Gabriel. I grew up in West Falmouth and I've been away 25 years out west. I'm a naturopathic nutritionist and I'm interested in high quality foods. And local foods are the highest quality. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to help support the agricultural efforts in this town and feed the population better. Wow. Sounds like a fantastic match to me. Um, it, 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 you mentioned here in your in your um, application that if basically everything that you just said that you are a um, a naturopathic nutritionist. What is uh, for those at home? What is a naturopathic nutritionist, um, please? I earned a master of science in nutrition <coughs> at naturopathic mm -hmm. medical school, which is um, the old school of medicine prior to modern medicine, allopathic, which mm -hmm. is sort of squelching symptoms, whereas naturopathy uses uh, herbs and homeopathy and traditional forms of medicine that were available well before modern pharmacy. Um, and food is one of those modalities used to treat people and keep us well. Okay. And um, well, any, any questions from Excellent. the board Not a very right now? Well, I can no. ask you a million questions right now about what you're talking about. You can read my book. It can read your book. <laughs> okay. Well, please. Um, have you attended any of the Agricultural Commission yes. meetings? And is there what do you see that they are doing that you might be able to help them with, or what what might you see as um, a, a direction that Falmouth can go in? How, how are we agriculturally? I guess shall I ask you in Falmouth? Well, we have a long way to go. Um, I think that that there are other towns that are more pro-agriculture. Um, 
I think that there are probably more consumers here who don't get their needs met mm -hmm. with high quality foods. Um, it seems that I like their extension into um, aquaculture, mm -hmm. and I like next sea question. vegetables and, and shellfish and all fish. Um, I think that I, I like the preservation of the silo and <coughs> other farms and more farmers markets and outlets for small people to grow and to, to um, make available foods to the, the community. Mm -hmm. I like that, I think I learned that you can have chickens on less than five acres now. I oh think yes. That's wise. <laughs> you can have roosters and on less than five acres wow. according to my neighborhood. <laughs> so, so I like the issues that are up, but I, I have a lot to learn. Okay, great. And um, yes, I, I, I members of the board here know that indeed the town is has been considering writing an aquaculture program and I know that the Agricultural Commission, I believe that they've volunteered, they've they've stepped up to become greatly involved with it. I know that the Department of Natural Resources, the DNR, is currently working on it. But it would be nice if we could get all segments of, of town volunteers and, and, and put, it, put something together that's cohesive and coherent to help encourage aquaculture, which is indeed still agriculture in town. Right. So thank you for volunteering to help with this. Any other questions from the board? Well, we have um, one opening. And it is indeed until the end of this June. So again, if you um, so desire, you can just reapply and we wouldn't have to go through the interviewing process again. And then you could serve um, up to three concurrent terms for nine years plus these two months tacked on to it. So I have a motion that would be um, a term expiring June 30th, 2012. Oh, Madam Chair, I move that we appoint Ms. Gabrielle to the Agricultural Commission for the term expiring June 30, 2012. Second. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Hey, aye. Aye. Thank, thank you very much for your volunteering. And um, if you just go to town hall in the near aye. future, you can be sworn in. And Madam yes. Chair, just as a side note, mm -hmm. um, we got into a slippery slope last year by not doing committee reappointments mm -hmm. and waiting, especially in yep. regulatory boards, mm -hmm. until the end of June. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how long. Uh, Madam Chairman is going to be out, but I would think that we would want to start moving that process forward. I believe we are starting to move that forward. I think we've started scheduling things for um, for late May and into early June with, with reappointments. But um, thanks for bringing that up, Kevin, because I, I remember that too last year. And I don't believe Madam Chair is going to be out much longer. We wish her a speedy recovery. Pat. Okay. So. Let's see, we're <coughs> way ahead of schedule here, tight meeting. Um, is there anyone here for the sign hearing for the quilt show at Falmouth High School? Great, well if, if the board doesn't mind then we'll move ahead to our 8 o'clock agenda item. Yes, Brent? Actually because it's a hearing, Madam Chair, I believe we have to, to yeah. begin on schedule. And I, I had asked about that earlier, but because these aren't advertised in a certain way we don't need to keep doing this or how should we how do you suggest we move on we've got all we have left on the agenda are three <coughs> sign hearings one for eight one for 805 and one for 810 well, could I madam chair could I suggest okay reports you have the town managers report and okay that's fine with me move on to the town managers report very good thank you madam chair members of the board uh, Stephanie and I were pleased to attend the uh, Falmouth Historical Society's annual dinner this past Tuesday evening. The event at the uh, Seacrest Hotel uh, was very well attended, and I was happy to present a proclamation from the board. Board of Selectmen, in honor of the uh, Falmouth a Visiting Nurse Association, which was being recognized for their decades of dedicated service to Falmouth and all of Cape Cod. Also, uh, members of the board, I, uh, on Friday I, I attended a meeting of the ICMA, which is our, uh, Heather and my uh, professional management, uh, municipal management association. The 2013 conference planning committee, uh, that happened to be held in Ashland. As, as I've advised the board, I've been a, a member of this planning committee uh, for the past couple of years, along with several other Massachusetts managers. This is in preparation for the ICMA annual conference, which will be held in Boston in the fall of 2013. My thanks and compliments to uh, 
our colleagues in the Department of Public Works for their uh, spring cleanup work, including the repairs and painting to the ornamental uh, fence and closing the town common, and their priming and painting of the major anchor, which ornaments, ornaments uh, Town Hall Square, among other projects. We thank them for their work. As the uh, board may have noted, the uh, town's EDIC has announced that they are holding <coughs> a brief uh, press event on the steps of Town Hall at <coughs> 2 p.m. tomorrow, that would be May 1, to announce a new economic development initiative and partnership, and I've uh, attached copies of press releases transmitted uh, to the board for that exciting new initiative uh, to be announced tomorrow. Um, also, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board, I want to uh, congratulate uh, Chief Riello and uh, uh, his officers on the uh, Falmouth Police Department, uh, members of the uh, Sheriff's Department, and the State Police for their tireless work in successfully locating a missing person in, Woods Hole, in the Woods Hole area who was lost overnight. We're very happy uh, through that uh, extraordinary uh, bit of teamwork uh, to work through the night and uh, also work with neighbors in, in the area as well uh, through the uh, benefit of a uh, reverse 911 call uh, to secure the uh, safety of that missing individual. So my thanks and compliments to all, and particularly our police department for the excellent lead that they took in that process. Uh, also, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, yesterday I was happy to join the uh, Falmouth Road Race Board and Selectman uh, Kevin Murphy in the uh, dedication of the uh, Tommy Leonard Historic Starting Line uh, at Captain Kids in Woods Hole in honor of the uh, uh, nationally and world-renowned uh, Falmouth Road Race. So it was a great event, uh, well uh, attended as well, and the weather could not have been better. So my compliments to uh, Tommy Leonard for his great vision and dedication, the Falmouth Road Race Board, and all uh, those who have worked tirelessly to make that such a successful event through the years in Falmouth. And we look forward to that event as has been approved by the board uh, this August. And uh, Madam Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you. All right. well, thank you very much, Julian. Any comments or questions for Julian? Well, I know that you're having a, a press conference tomorrow on this new EDIC um, program, but is there anything that you can uh, leak to us ahead of time? It's, it's a very exciting program that uh, it looks like the EDIC is, is moving in a new direction. Well, I know, I know. Our, our, our liaison is uh, Selectman Kevin Murphy, who uh, I think who has no voice. Might, <laughs> might be uh, interested I'll in I'll try to uh, explain a little bit. Coastal Capital is uh, a, uh, a funding organization that utilizes a lot of small business grants. Mm -hmm. There are many small businesses that need a small portion to bridge the gap mm -hmm. between what they can fund and when they can get actually qualify for a small business grant. Mm -hmm by leveraging a company like Coastal Capital to help bridge this gap, you'll in fact find that we will create jobs in the town of Falmouth. Uh, this money will be paid back into a revolving fund and uh, all folks will have to go through a rigorous um, uh, background check like you would for any banking uh, loan or scenario. So uh, uh, the, uh, the EDIC is quite comfortable with it. It's a way to not just sit on the funds we have there and make sure that we can invest in our own community. This will be Falmouth-based and Falmouth-based startup companies. Yeah, I was talking to, um, to Michael Galasso at one of our economic sustainability discussions a few weeks ago, and I know that, that he expressed great excitement from the EDIC for seeming to get involved with sort of, it's almost like Falmouth's getting into microloans and for, for small business here in town. It's like a productive way to use some of the um, some of the reserves that the DIC has from the um, real estate that we once had right. in, uh, in our technology park. So, any other questions? <coughs> no? Are there any individual selectments reports? Anybody care to share with us for five minutes what uh, you've uh, no. done in the past couple of weeks? In the past week, as far as meetings. Anything for you? I am lucky I can't talk today. Yeah, I guess I guess we are. This is making the meeting much shorter, Kevin. I thank, don't, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Actually, well, folks happy at home. I'll I'll contribute to uh, to the selectmen's report. Um, last week, with the um, economic sustainability subcommittee that that Brent and I are working on, that unfortunately because we're in the process of interviewing 
um, members of the scientific and technology se sector in town, we're having to go to them for their meetings as opposed to them being able to come to us. So we're meeting during the work day, which makes it a little difficult for Brent, although I know we've just We've been working on trying to mm -hmm. get a meeting going in the near future that, that we can actually attend. And last week we met with, um, the three of us met with, um, with the Director of Academic Research at MBL and also the Director of Human Resources down in the hole. And we had really engaging conversation for about an hour and a half, perhaps two hours, about um, MBL and some of the other nonprofits, or not for profits in town, and their needs and their goals for the future. And we we're just trying to figure out how Falmouth can help um, the, the sectors that bring jobs and bring people and bring um, revenues to the town, how we can help them stay in town and perhaps help them achieve their goals, make things a little easier for them. And um, one, one um, intriguing <coughs> component of our discussion revolved around um, conference centers. None of us realized that, um, that NBL actually has a couple hundred beds down in the hole and they host a number of international conferences every year and we started talking about how you know wouldn't it be great if Falmouth were to have some kind of conference center that um, that could host larger international conferences and more often in town and it, it was an intriguing discussion we were talking about public private relationships partnerships and um, you know MBL seemed to think that all the nonprofits in town could probably fill a conference center 10 months out of the year so uh, it, w it was a really intriguing take. I mean, this is why we're, we're going out and talking. I mean, again, for those of you who, who aren't aware of the group, there are <coughs> two members of the Board of Selectmen, two members of the Planning Board, and two members of the EDIC who sit on, on this committee. And then I see in the audience some of our regular attendees. Uh, we're trying to put together the economic sustainability segment of the local comprehensive plan, trying to see where Falmouth will be, you know, 20 years, 50 years out into the future, trying to maintain um, Falmouth's economic and, and demographic viability and um, you know we're going to representatives from various sectors in town that we've identified as a group and um, it's really um, <coughs> rewarding and productive um, process that we're that we're going through right now because ideas are surfacing that we never would have come up with just sitting alone at a table in, in a committee meeting and um, this week we're going to be meeting with um, Hui down in the hole on Wednesday, and um, we'll just keep taking it forward. But I hope that we can start putting pencil to paper, or pen to paper, in the near future, and start thinking about um, a direction for Falmouth, forward direction and um, constructive direction for Falmouth. Not only um, <coughs> bringing high-end jobs to town, but also keeping people here and um, and keeping our industries here, the ones that we've already cultivated, and uh, allowing them to thrive into the future. So it's really invigorating work. Um, again, we're meeting in the hole on Wednesday, and then I believe we're, the next week we're going to sort of decompress and um, discuss what we've, what we've accomplished. So in two weeks, there'll be more of a workshop meeting just for the board itself. But again, these are all open meetings. Can I? Yeah. Also, may it, it's more of a question, I think, for Julian. Um, we had a joint meeting with the ZBA some time ago. And I know, um, you know, my famous list, one of the things on here, and I know things have a tendency in government to move at a snail's pace, but one of the, th their, their biggest concern was regarding getting their handbook redone. You know, it's a mess. The ZBA. Yeah, and also assisting them with some type of enforcement powers. And my, my I think what I, the statement I made that night was, you know, we, we leave these meetings sometimes so ready to go and do something, and then we sort of forget about it. And I know governments are supposed to be able to multitask, and I know we have a lot of tasking <laughs> we're doing now, but is there anything to report at all on that yet, or we'll be able to sit down and discuss it, maybe reach out to them at some point? I well, uh, great question, Selectman Braga. My memory is that either this week or next uh, meeting's been set up with uh, uh, our colleagues on the ZBA, and okay. so I'll have more to report after that. Oh, okay. Um, and that is uh, one of the follow-ups from uh, uh, the discussion to which you're referring. Okay. Thank you very much, Julian. Appreciate it. Okay. Anyone else the report? Great. And it's 8 o'clock. Just as scheduled. So uh, we have a sign hearing with Ms. Porteous, if you wouldn't mind coming to the lectern and identif speaking at the microphone so that the viewers at home can hear your testimony <coughs> and identify yourself, too, for the record takers and for all those in attendance. Good evening. My name is Kathy Porteous, mm -hmm. and I'm the co-chairman for the 
quilt show for the Crazy Quilters of Cape Cod. We're based, most of our members are in Falmouth. We meet in Falmouth. And this is our second biennial um, show that we're having, and we're looking for a permit for um, three signs to be put up on the 29th and 30th of June of this year. We'll be having the show at the high school. Okay, and your three signs, um, you wanted to put them at the corner of Route 28 at the off-ramp at Brick Kiln Road, mm -hmm. and then also at the corner of Gifford Street and Brick Kiln, and then one at Falmouth High School right. and Brick Kiln, too. And um, you've been before the Design Review Committee, mm -hmm. and they mentioned that um, your signs will be 18 by 24 inches, which equals three square feet, and two one sign, be, two, two of them. them. Yeah. That's right, and one of them will be six square feet in front of the school. Mm -hmm. And there'll be foam core with wood frame placed in wire stands. And the design review committee voted to recommend these signs to the board of selectmen. So, do you perchance have a muster of or a, a, an image for the signs for us? Oh uh, no, I do not. They're, they're, I wrote. I did put it. Did you get the packet that I left with Miss Davidson? Uh, we've got. I've got a map here that shows us where they're going to be. I don't see a copy of here. Uh, another sure. drawing. They just say quilt show. Oh, yeah, they say quilt show on them. Yep. Yeah, that's got it. it. Right Very simple. <coughs> just, they almost look like campaign signs. Yeah, that's it. They're like a real estate sign, really. Okay. Two of them are. The other one's an A frame. <coughs> and and they nice have stuff. arrows on them and they're that's directional, it. so we'll yeah. help mitigate Very traffic easy. issues yep. in town. Just so people know where we are. We feel, with it being the high school, it's easy to find. Mm -hmm. But this way, it's just so that people coming in on 28 we'll know which direction to go okay and so this is for the weekend of june 29th and is it a weekend yes it is it's friday and saturday okay friday, we'll put saturday. Them friday morning pick them up saturday afternoon great thank you and what does the board what's the pleasure of the board madam chair i'll make a uh, motion to approve the signs second okay all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. opposed no okay thank you, very much. thank you very much we wish you a successful quilt show thank you High attendance. Yes, I hope so too. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Madam Chair. Yes. If I just may, I see Mr. Fox sitting there. He had something under summary of actions. It actually passed the oh. old stone dock. I hate to see you sit here the rest of the night. Yeah, the, it's all set. Summary of actions is all done. We're all, we already went through it. You're all approved. Everything's passed. I just passed. don't want you to sit there the rest of the night. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Oh, well, we took it earlier. We had thank you. Moved. thank you. We had a short dog park. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, no problem. Thank you, David, for pointing that out. Okay, uh, so now we have a um, yeah at 8:05. Right? We have a sign hearing for Molly's Parking, and I know I, I see Ben Metzakapa in the audience, a representative of Molly's Parking. Ben, nice to Me. see you again. Thank you. Nice to see you all. It's becoming a regular event here. It has been regular for many years. I'm Ben Metzakapa. I represent Molly's Parking, my family's business. Um, I'm here once again to. Uh, get permission to uh, use our handheld sign, <coughs> which we've done for many years in the past. And um, the past few years, there hasn't been any real resistance or problems of any kind. So with that, uh, I ask for permission for this sign from you. Okay, and the Design sure. Review Committee has uh, approved the sign as previously yeah. designed. and. Um, I know that last year we had approved um, Molly's Parking's use of this sign according to certain conditions, and Ooh. Like a, something Star random. Trek. Is that Star Trek <laughs> or Lost in Space? <laughs> it was Lost in Space. <laughs> Sorry um, about that. Um, anyhow, we we had some. Um, Conditions last year that we attached to this. I don't know if it's the pleasure of the board to. Let me read them. Or, although down here, I mean, when we approved it last year, it said approved with conditions. I don't know if they have to be read into the record or not. I don't, I don't think we need to read them into the record okay. the, unless the board wishes to read them into the record. And um, the board can either approve the sign as just free or with conditions. What's the pleasure of the board? So move with the conditions. Second. Okay, so the conditions that were drafted or that were reiterated on May 24th, 2011, the six conditions. Yes. And um, just so for discussion's sake, so that Mr. Metzakapa knows there's no difference in a sign permit is required by the building department, which I believe you have. The sign is approved for one season. The sign holder will act courteously, will stand only on Palmer Avenue, may only be used in Palmer Avenue. Stevenship Authority lot is closed, and the sign holder will not interfere with the flow of traffic 
for pedestrian <coughs> traffic, as Absolutely. has happened in the past. So we have a motion on the table and a second. All those in favor say, oh, it's a hearing. Is there any, anyone here to speak in favor of the signs? I should have done this for the quilters. Did anyone oppose the quilters? Anyone in opposition to Molly's parking and signs? Okay. So, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thanks very much. Thank you, Ben. Well, thank you for the timely, expeditious You're movement of the meeting. It's nice. Yeah. Tight meetings. Used to running a classroom. Crack that with. Okay. <coughs> so, on that note, then. Um, I, my apologies to anyone who wanted to testify for or against the quilt signs. Um, is there anyone here who intended to speak for or against the quilters? Okay. And I'll hold my peace. Okay. So then, we also have, we have another sign hearing at 8.10 for an off-premise sign for the Falmouth Ice Arena, Thomas B. Landers Road and Technology Parks. Do we have anybody here? Ah, yes. Okay, I see Mr. Are you Mr. McGowan? No. No, you're not. Mr. Moore. I recognize you, though, from being with the Ice Arena. Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore, of course. We have a request here for... Um, Assigned to be off premise on the corner of Thomas B. Landers Road and Technology Park <coughs> Drive. And you have indeed been in front of the Design Review Committee. Good evening, Mr. Moore. If you could Thank please you, Madam identify Chair. yourself for the record. Paul Moore, President of Falmouth Youth Hockey. Okay. Thank you. So you have a sign that you'd like to um, erect not on your property? Yeah, what we're doing is we're taking our existing sign on uh, Palmer Ave mm -hmm. and we'd like to move it to the new rink. Um, I was asked to bring to you tonight the um, outline, the property line of the of our existing site, and show where the sign's going to go. Um, we have Thomas Landers here, mm -hmm. heading east. Technology Park, second entrance in Technology Park. Um, here's the order of our property, and right here is where we propose the sign to go. Um, a lot of thought went in it. Um, we wanted it away from technology <coughs> park a little bit um, for visibility. There's also um, an existing technology park sign there now. There's a fire hydrant here. And this is about 190 some odd feet um, okay. away from the corner of our property. Um, and then we thought it would be good. We're right on the edge of the corner of the building, the existing building. And but you can see this mark here is where we propose the sign to go. <clears throat> okay, so um, I know that the sign, the design review committee has approved the sign itself, which is a, a, your pre existing sign. And it's in front of us today because um, we believe that the narrow strip of land where you wish to place it is actually town property. Correct. And this afternoon, we noticed that the Design Review Committee said that that strip probably belongs to the town. And I'm wondering if we have a decision on that yet. We don't. So we're not positive if that's town property or somebody else's property. So uh, how, how close, is, may, may, if I may, how, how close is it to the road, the sign? The sign's going to be probably 10 feet off the road. Well, I thought we had a 15-foot, no? Okay. Yeah, and, and gotcha. so we, we're not quite sure where the layout is, and Brent, so, you had a question? Uh, yes, it was actually uh, alluding to the public way, because I know Thomas B. Landers Road is, is a rather wide public yeah. way, and it seems to me that they could place the sign at the edge of the public way. It would still be significantly uh, far off the road that it wouldn't present any sort of a hazard to drivers and, and be outside of uh, this questionable parcel. I, I think it could work. Yeah, so we had a suggestion this afternoon that, um, that perhaps we, the board could um, approve this contingent upon the town engineers approving the final siting of the sign, both regarding safety and ownership, and that um, perhaps we have town council chime in on it and that we make the, um, the um, approval revocable 
tonight, just in case that is not our property. Because if it's not our property, we obviously can't approve it. Well, if it's not our property, <laughs> they could get the permission of whoever's property it is. That is correct. So, but, uh, but our, still, our approval could be for the off-premise sign. That is correct. Yeah, we, we could approve it for the off-premise sign, but then um, and we'd want to have it, though, approved also, if it is our property, um, by the town engineers to make sure that it doesn't cause any driving hazards or, um, or issues with traffic flow. Heather. Thank you, Madam Chairman. It's really, there are two, two issues. I think you can approve the off-permit sign. We can. Uh, yes, yes okay. and I think you can also approve the placement of the sign subject to review by the town council and the um, town engineer. The town council only that we would want to have a replicable um, authorization to place the sign there in the event there's ever any road work and it right. needs to be removed. Mm -hmm. So that that's just part of the permanent decision. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve uh, under those terms. I think it's a great location. Yeah. You surely don't want it right on the corner. This is uh, the closest to Route 28, where many people who aren't familiar where the ice arena is will give them a little heads up when the turn is coming. Mm -hmm. yep. Second. Okay. Open for discussion. I think your, your points are right on, Mr. Murphy. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No. You've got your sign as long as it's our property. And the well, town engineer approves it. Th thank you very much. I'd like to take this opportunity to, to thank the board, thank the community. Um, this certainly is going to be a great community benefit, and we um, the support <coughs> we've gotten has been just unbelievable. Yeah. We're, we're going to have ice in probably uh, two weeks. Great. And we're scheduled for our June 16th open. But um, certainly this board and Kevin, you go way back. Um, uh, way back to those feasibility studies uh, eight years ago, and it's been a long haul, but this, this town has been phenomenal to us, and um, we hope we can give back to this community for years to come through a great facility like well, the Ice Arena. Thank, thank you. you very much for having such a fantastic project, and best of luck with your opening. You thank you very much. Ice. Right. Wow. Thanks. Okay. Have a fine evening. Thanks, Paul. Okay. So um, at that, then, we've, we seem to have, do we have any correspondence? So no. then, um, if I may, we have to, we started an executive session before um, our meeting tonight, and we have to suspend it until um, the close of this meeting. So I'd be willing to entertain a motion to return to executive session regarding um, pending claims and litigation of wind turbines, Chapter 30A, and then to close and uh, not to return to public session. So moved. Second. Second. Kevin Murphy, aye. Braga, aye. Putnam, aye. Freitag, aye. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Pat Thatcher. I'm Margaret Gifford. We work for the global real estate company Sotheby's International Realty. Margaret, how long have you been in real estate? About 200 years. How about you? I'm um, coming up on it. What is the real estate market like right now, Margaret? Well, interest rates are very favorable. There's great inventory, and it is a good time for buyers and sellers. And you know, Falmouth is so wonderful. Not only is it a beautiful place, but there are so many outdoor activities, cultural events, and opportunities to volunteer. Isn't, isn't Falmouth, Falmouth great? great? Remember, WC Communications is your printing team. We are calm and cool under pressure. You can call us at 508-563-7366 or toll free at 1-800-696-7303.